Do you like your computer hardware reviews plain and fast? Then here it is my honest opinion regarding one of the best low-budget USB GPUs you can buy today. If you keep your expectations in check, this Radeon RX GPU, refreshed by AMD three consecutive times, is today okay for 1080p gaming and no longer expensive, depending on where you live of course. That's it. Thanks for watching, subscribe and press the like if you like, and see you on the next one. As for the rest of my amazing viewers that always enjoy a good story with bad memes before the main gaming benchmark this, here it is my true intro. We are at the end of 2018. Nvidia's initial RTX sales wasn't going as planned, mainly because cryptocurrency miners who was dubbing their graphics cards like mad, saturating the second-hand market with cheap GPUs. At the same time, the much advertised real-time ray tracing was only supported by very few games, making the purchase even less appealing. On the other side, AMD didn't really have anything new to show off from their Radeon brands. The much anticipated Navi architecture was scheduled to kick off further in the following year, and having no new product to sell just few months before the Christmas and New York holidays, it will be a huge marketing failure from AMD's part. Since we all know holidays is a period when millions of people willingly spend their hard-earned money to cover their psychological needs. So, one blessed day, AMD called a meeting, most probably at the company's headquarters somewhere in Santa Clara, California, United States of America. They sat down and they came up with a terrific idea. They said, why don't we take our semi-power fishing and driver clumsy but offered up apprentice, the RX 480, launched back in 2016, that we spun off a little bit more aggressively overclocked back in 2017 as RX 580, seduced by the dark art of customer's manipulation and always kept undervolted to cool off its hot temperament. And this time, let's shrink the chipset to 12 nanometer and inject some extra core frequency. What a great idea, the old thought. You know something? Let's call the final product RX Vader. Uh, eh, 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 no, someone else is already using that. Okay, okay, okay. Look, uh, how about RX 5 Knight? Yeah, that sounds very, very innovative. Bravo, said all with one mouth and clapped their hands. After a few seconds, another idea came up to the table. How about GDR5X VRAM? Nah. It will close the profit margin of A by B's. We don't want to irritate them, except maybe EVGA. <laughs> Do you think the bosses will eventually discover that this is one more but last glorified GCN architecture and get mad? Nah. Look what we are doing all these years with Polaris refreshments in Chinese market, and in case they do figure it out, we always can appease their spirits by throwing three free bones, uh, games I mean. That sounds fantastic, said all, while cheering and clapping their hands with glee. Alright, alright, let's quit while we're ahead. That was so awesome. That was awesome. Despite the fact that this made-up story never happened, in November 15th of 2018, the Radeon RX 590 was launched into market with exactly the same specs of this made-up story, starting from 280 US dollars, if you was of course lucky enough to find it at that price. Regardless of that, almost nobody cared about the spin-off, since at the time you could buy new an RX 580 for about 230 US dollars and overclocked yourself, getting almost the same performance with a bit less power efficiency. Or you could pay 350 US dollars to buy use the 15% more powerful and less power hungry GTX 1070. Either way, at the time being, the used GPU market offered a plethora of choices to shoot every packet, making the RX 590 an expensive product. Unless you wanted the Division 2, Devil May Cry 5 and the remake of Resident Evil 2 for free. Of course, all this belonged to the past. So today, almost 4 years later and while prices worldwide are soaring on each and every product and service, the used GPU prices are following the opposite direction and are falling fast. Today, a used RX 590 is not as expensive as it used to be. In fact, it isn't expensive at all. 
This brings up the question, how does the RX 590 compare to other graphics cards in terms of gaming performance and cost? To answer that, I found at bargain price this XFX AMD Radeon RX 590 aka the Fat Boy, a dual and half slot nicely built card. Its beefy appearance and the refreshed 12nm lithography that in theory promised better power efficiency with higher clock speeds than its predecessor gives the impression that in reality this is an RX 580 on steroids. Since I don't like to judge a book by its cover or even by its past reviews, I decided to run some games to check out if RX 590 is good or not for gaming in 2022. But there was a small nuisance that I had to solve first in order to proceed with the benchmarks. The real reason that I bought cheap this card is because the seller was depicting the product as defective. By the description, I had already an idea of what was the root of the problem. My prediction confirmed immediately after I tried to run some tests. The RX 590 was working very hot, throttling the core frequency. At the same time, the fan curve of Adrenaline software was stacked at 50% and refused to go any higher than that. So I decided to have a look into it. Beyond the dry up thermal paste and thermal pads, as well as the discovery of some Paleolithic fossils, the rest of the card was looking fine. So I removed the dead corpse along with the in dust, cleaned everything with isopropyl alcohol and replaced the thermal pads as well as the thermal paste. Before I was to assemble everything back together, I had to do one more trick that would solve the stacked fan curve. And the solution was this. This small switch here is offering dual bias options and it is possible for all the mess. Switching it away from the PCI Express power connectors, you could activate the stealth mode, thus lower RPM curve with quieter fans. Switching it towards the PCI Express power connectors, the card works at optimal performance, unlocking the fans to work at higher rotations per minute. So said and done all that, I was ready to test the card once more and check if the problem will persist. And guess what? I didn't bought a lemon after all. The card was working like a charm. Playing a bit with the fan control settings, applying a minor undervolt while keeping the same core frequencies and boosting the power limit to 20% with the result to drop the temperature by 15 degrees Celsius. Now it was time to update the latest AMD drivers, reboot the Windows 10 and benchmark the RX 590 using my... Uh, uh, <clears throat> One moment please. There you go. As I said, my not any more budget friendly computer, specifications of which you can find in the description below. So I started off the tests with three very popular titles, taking advantage of Ubisoft's 7 days free trial access. First was the integrated benchmark of Assassin's Creed Valhalla, running under the quite optimized but also demanding second version of Anvil Next Engine. At 1080p high settings I have seen a lot of micro stutters and the card failed to reach on average the minimum 60 frames per second. Dropping the settings to medium, the average frames got a bit better, reaching the 67, but the 1% low stayed below 60. Because of this, I continue to see occasional micro stutters. Additionally, lowering the video settings, I had some obvious delayed texture de rendering. This new side effect also occurred when I chose low preset settings, with the only difference that the average and 1% low frames was both well above the 60 mark and the stutters appeared way less often. Aesthetically, low settings doesn't provide a good experience for a game like Assassin's Creed Valhalla, so I raised the resolution to 1440, chose medium settings and enabled FSR mode. Beyond the muddy graphics quality and the expected by now jittery motion picture, the card reached the highest FPS so far, with 82 on average and 61 on 1% low. 
pretty much the RX 590 is unable to offer satisfying gameplay experience without dropping the settings to minimum or enabling the FSR feature. This fact alone wasn't enough to end the trial here, so next game from Ubisoft's AAA basket was Far Cry 6, which is an AMD sponsored title. This one runs on Dunia 2 engine and its benchmark is also capable to give some hard time to our contestant. This time the RX 590 does a bit better job on 1080 high settings, achieving some great numbers with 71 and 62 on average and on per se low respectively. Still, if you observe the frame time graph and then the footage, the micro stutters are an ongoing phenomenon. Even with FSR enabled, the occasional frame time spikes will remain, making certain that we need to drop the settings to medium or even low if we want to have a smooth out of the box experience. There are some other solutions to fix this inconvenience, but this is not the purpose of this video. Thus, I move on to the third Ubisoft title, that it was one of the games you could get for free if you bought an RX 590 at lunch. A bit old now, but the Division 2 contains also a strong benchmark. The RX 590 will offer high frames without problem, even at 1080p and high preset options enabled. Moreover, it runs a bit smoother than the previous two titles I tested, but still not flawlessly, resulting in more stutters here and there. Out of the three Ubisoft titles, the Division 2 was the most forgiving, no surprising at all, considering that both the game and the graphics card share the same age. For the French of anime style open world RPG, I recently added Jensen Impact to the benchmark shoot. Since the purpose of this test is to discover the highest performance for the GPU, I removed the 60 frames cap. At high settings 1080 and ideal Sync enabled, the RX 590 gave some high frames on both average and 1% low, with the overall gameplay experience being excellent. Looking at MSI Afterburn layout, the game definitely is more GPU dependent, so I might keep this title as default choice for the upcoming graphics cards tests. My only concern is the kernel intruding and the cheat that accompanies the game. What I'm not going to keep is the Forza Horizon 5. Unfortunately, the free trial period of PC Game Pass is over, so until the channel find a way to make money, this one will stay out of the list. Nevertheless, this doesn't mean we can't enjoy one last ride, using the beautiful and quite demanding integrated benchmark. At 1080 high settings, the produced frames barely was kept above 60 frames per second. Despite that, the frame time didn't showcase any sudden spikes throughout the duration of the game. A more wise choice will be to enable FSR at ultra quality and secure the desirable 60 frames on 1% low. The next title was probably the most demanding game so far, since the RX 590 running Halo Infinite couldn't produce more than 57 FPS on average at 1080p medium settings and with the high definition textures off. I had to drop the settings to low to get above 60 frames on average. Still, the 1% low continued to be below 60 FPS. Consider also the multiplayer mode is less demanding than the open world of campaign mode, the RX 590 will earn a spot to the list of AMD's cards that perform very poorly on this specific game. I can say the same for Hitman 3, that beyond it considers a top-notch optimized game, it carries also a set of excellent benchmarks. One of those is the Dubai scene, that at 1080 resolution and on high preset granted a fluent performance. The RX 590 achieved the same performance also on the trusty built-in benchmark of Shadow of the Tomb Raider. But there is smooth frame timeline with high frame rates even at 1080p on high settings was the outcome of this test. Naraka Blade Point is a relatively newest title that I had the opportunity to play a bit under the free trial days on Steam. This one at high settings, 1080 resolution, gave some glorious stutters of 5 seconds each. I'm not sure if the game was buffering the shader cast or if it was loading something else on the background, but having this kind of stutters on the tutorial mode meant only bad news for our graphics card. The medium settings fixed a bit the average frames, but the 1% low remained awfully low while the gameplay remained stuttering. 
Surprisingly, choosing low settings fixed everything, with an immersive increase on both average and unpersonal low values, exceeding by far the previous poor frames. Talking about poor frame rate results, Total War Saga Troy at high settings 1080 resolution and at a lacing enabled looked amazing at 30 frames per second. I am pretty sure you wouldn't expect a real-time strategy game to make the life of RX 590 so difficult, but the truth is the battle benchmark contains some pretty difficult to be rendered scenes. By disabling the eddy lacing, the frame time became more linear with perfect frame rate numbers for our 60Hz refresh rate monitor. On the other hand, if you don't like the visual outcome without eddy lacing, the medium settings and 2x eddy lacing will output the same results as the preview screen but without the jagged graphics. Godfall is a gaming title that I like to use whenever I'm testing graphics cards. It has everything that a GPU reviewer will ever need. It is free, it has a built-in benchmark, you play with video settings on the fly without the need to restart the game or even close the benchmark while it's running. It combines both DLSS and FSR features, but it has one major flaw. It produced some very erratic frame times and at times a very jumpy gameplay, regardless the graphics card I'm testing. Of course, the weaker the GPU, the worse the starters, and the RX 590 couldn't be the exception to the rule. At 1080p high settings I got high average frames and poor 1% low. Enabling the FSR at ultra quality mended the 1% low, but made the image quality very muddy. I believe this is because of a very bad implementation of the FSR feature into the game engine and less because the FSR technology itself. In order to play this game smoothly with your RX 590, choose medium settings and set a cap of 60 frames per second. Finally, the RX 590 held up pretty well on the GPU-oriented benchmark of Rift Breaker, giving some very high frames on both average 1% low and leaving some good impressions to our last test. Before we move on to the conclusions, it is important to point out the obvious absence of 1440p tests. Currently, this content is oriented towards low-budget 1080p gaming computers, so I treated this 4-year-old GPU as such. Said that, it will be out of reality in 2022 to ask FAT results from the XFX RX 590 FAT Boy version. Under that perspective, I am very satisfied with the graphics card's overall performance, not only in terms of gaming, but also considering the overall functional behavior. The temperature was always under control, without the need to keep the fans working at high RPMs, and the Adrenaline software kept the card totally silent while browsing the net, watching videos or doing light productivity tasks. The card itself has a very sturdy and thick build and a plethora of video outputs to cover every possible multi-monitor task. Furthermore, AMD's idea back in the days to provide 8GB VRAM on all high-tier Polaris GPUs made this architecture super future-proof. It would be amazing if AMD had enabled the Smart Access memory and RSR features for the Polaris cards also. But then again, I would ask too much, wouldn't I? Mind that if you want to upgrade your old office PC or if you have a no-name power supply below 500W and you don't want to spend money to buy a new one, then you should look for a less power-hungry GPU. The same goes if you want to play with high settings the latest and greatest PC titles or prefer resolutions above 1080. As for the crucial matter of price to performance ratio, it is my policy to avoid any reference to specific price tags unless it is necessary to the story such as historical MSRP values. In most cases, my advice is to do your own market research, comparing your target component with similar ones. In terms of performance, the RX 590 was and remains an overclocked RX 580 with better power efficiency, performing 5 to 10% higher than its predecessor. If you can find it at the same price of an RX 580, then this considers a good purchase. The real question is how much this price should be, and the answer is 
no more than 50% less than the cost of a brand new AMD RX 6500 XT that you can purchase from your local or whatever market you have access to. Don't forget that you have also access to the comments below and you are more than welcome to discuss your thoughts or make questions considering the main topic. If by chance you enjoyed our content, we will appreciate very much if you leave your like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. There is also the extra chore to press the notification bell if you don't want to miss our upcoming videos. Regardless, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.